This is the tale of an epic food fight and one group's heroic struggle for freedom. In the realm of the winds, the people cried for sustenance. Clever merchants launched mobile taverns capable of sating the people's hunger wherever they may be. I'm Greg Burke. I'm the owner of the Chicago Schnitzel King. This is my mobile food jeep where I produce the best schnitzel in the city of Chicago. I'm Kristen Casper, the Chicago Schnitzel Queen of the Chicago Schnitzel King food truck. I'm Laura Pekarik, entrepreneur, owner of Cupcakes for Courage and Courageous Bakery. Most hailed these horseless carriages as God sent, but a few of the landed gentry feared the new ways. They beseeched the Grand Council, whose alderman lord over each of the realm's 50 wards, to forbid the carriages from drawing nigh to the gentry's own taverns. The effect of the decree was to prohibit the carriages from feeding the people throughout vast expanses of the realm. The 200-foot rule that's in place right now restricts uh, all food trucks and food operators to park within 200 feet from any uh, brick-and-mortar establishment, which means any business that sells food, um, such as a 7-Eleven, uh, the Quickie Mart on the corner. The penalty for any transgressions would be swift and severe. I could legally park on the street, but be within 200 feet of a restaurant and receive a $2,000 fine. Whereas somebody who parks in front of a fire hydrant pays only $100. The sole council member to rise up against the decree defiantly declared. I think restraint of trade is uh, what this ordinance serves up. Cooking up innovation was the intent. A brick and mortar restaurant lobby got a hold of it and it was stuffed with protectionism and baked in the oven of paranoia. The Herald of Record similarly noted the council's protectionist motive. Being that I'm an owner of a food truck and a bakery, I think that they definitely can coexist. Even in Los Angeles today, there is a very viable restaurant industry and also a very viable food truck industry. It's possible here in Chicago, too. The council even called upon their seers to observe the food truck's every move. It just feels like an ankle bracelet as a small business owner to have to have a GPS tracking device monitor your every whereabouts. Um, I don't see what the need for it is. I think it's wrong, and I personally don't want it on my vehicle. Their fortunes appeared bleak, but our merchants refused to falter. They joined forces with a merry band of warriors known as the Institute for Justice, which had thwarted similar attacks in other realms. IJ's National Street Vending Initiative has improved food truck laws across the nation. Many cities have embraced reform, but a few continue to decide what businesses win or lose. In those situations, the only way to protect people's constitutional rights is through the courts. I'm fighting with the Institute for Justice and my fellow food trucks because I'm fighting for what I believe is right. And I think competition is what makes America great, and I want to be able to compete and serve my customers. Hearing of the King's Great Quest, princes and paupers and all the people throughout the realm join together to cry out, Long live the Schnitzel King! May he forever fill our stomachs with schnitzel and our lives with liberty. Food trucks are a vibrant symbol of the American dream, and together with the Institute for Justice, we can fight to make that dream a reality. For more on these courageous heroes and their epic battle, visit ij.org and like IJ on Facebook.